a student today in a GED group was posting pictures um, of GED Ready practice problems. Now, I can't do the actual problems from the GED Ready, but here is a parallel problem that involves the exact same skills. Okay, so let's take a look at this. A snack food company has decided to package its new brand of crackers in a box shaped like a rectangular prism. Somehow I have my eraser instead of my pen. Here we go. In a box shaped like a rectangular prism. The box needs to have a volume of 206 and a quarter cubic inches. If the width of the box, the width of the box is going to be seven and a half inches, and the depth of the box is going to be two and a half inches, what must the height of the box be? Okay. So I say that I have a rectangular prism going on. A rectangular prism is just basically what we think of as like a cardboard box, which makes sense because that's used, how we're used to crackers being packaged. So it looks something like this. And I have some information about my box. I know that it's total volume and volume is the amount of material a three-dimensional shape can contain, the amount that can fill it. So imagine if I filled this box. That's the idea of volume. And I know the width of the box is going to be seven and a half inches, about seven and a half inches. And the depth of the box is two and a half inches. We'll call that depth, two and a half. And then they ask us, what must the height of the box be? So if you're thinking right now about going for your GED formula sheet, that's some really good instinct because on the formula sheet, we have a volume of a rectangular prism formula, a volume of a rectangular prism formula, and that is V equals length times width times height. Okay. Even though we're not looking for the volume, we already have the volume, we are looking for something in this formula. We're looking for the height, and this formula involves height, and so I can use it to find any one of these letters. I can use it to find volume, length, width, or height. Okay. All I have to do is plug in the numbers that I do know. So let's take a look. What do we know? Well, we know the volume of our box is 20, 206 and a quarter. Um, cubic inches. Now, I am going to plug this in under V, but I do not want to have to use this fraction if I don't have to, um, especially since I would have a calculator if I was doing this problem on the GED. I think I'll flip it to a decimal. You don't have to. You would get the exact same answer if you didn't, but I know that one quarter is the same as 0.25. One quarter, just like 25 cents. And so I'm going to put 206.25. So that's what I subbed in for V. Now, the next thing in my formula was an equal sign. I'll put an equal sign here. The next thing I should be looking for is length. Now, notice they didn't name anything length. They said this was my width. And this was, oh, I'm sorry. This was my width. Seven and a half was my width. And two and a half was my depth. And the unknown was my height. So I can see that I know my W, my width is 7.5. And I can see that height is the thing I don't know, but a lot of people are like, where's my length? It didn't give me length. It gave me depth. No stress. Uh, whether, whatever I call it, whether I call it depth or length, depth or length, the three dimensions on a rectangular solid are totally interchangeable. So I'm just going to plug that 2.5 in there. It's another way of talking about that length. Okay, so now I have a formula I've plugged into it. It's time to start the math. Now this is an algebraic formula. I am trying to figure out what h is equal to, but please remember that before you start solving, you can simplify. You can do any forwards math that you know how to do, and this 2.5 times 7.5 is math I am totally capable of doing, and so I'm going to do that. 2.5 times 7.5 and I'm doing that in my TI-30XS GED calculator, that's 18.75. All I did was simplify, multiply these two numbers together. Nothing else is going to change, it's going to drop down. Now is the time to start solving. I've, there's no more simplifying to do on the left, no more simplifying to do on the right. It's time to try to get H alone. Now, 
Of course, as you guys know, I can solve when something is an equation, when it's two expressions separated by an equal sign, I can solve. And the wonderful thing about equations is you can do whatever you want. And so I am literally going to take 18.75 away from h by dividing. Since 18.75 and h are currently multiplying, see them shoved together like this, I'll do the opposite, which is dividing. Now, the only reason why I can do that is because this is an equation. The rule of algebra is I can do whatever I want to an equation as long as I do it to both sides. So I'm going to jump this equal sign and divide both sides by 18.75. Now let's take a look at what happens when we do this. Well, on this right-hand side, 18.75 multiplying and 18.75 dividing cancel. So all I have left, left is an H. And on this left-hand side, well, there's the math to do. And again, I'm going to plug it in my calculator. 206.25 divided by 18.75 gives me 11. And so what do I know? I, need, I know that the height of this box needs to be 11. And 11 what? 11 inches. Now, a lot of students say to me, Kate, shouldn't it be cubic inches? I know volume is cubic inches. The volume itself would be cubic inches, but each one of the individual dimensions are just lines. This height is just a line, so it's going to be a linear measurement. It's going to be plain old inches. So the answer here is 11 inches.